You know, it's funny that Android is more than a decade old, and even today, one of the biggest complaints is still not addressed. Because yes, Google just released the first public beta of Android 11, but it's not for everyone. We have some more details on what and what not to expect at Samsung's Galaxy Unpacked, and Nokia is apparently facing some new delays for their product launches this year. I'm Jaime Rivera, and I'm not gonna lie, I ran into this recording thinking that I would think of something to say in this segment, but you know the way it goes. It's been so many years, you've run out of jokes. Give me some in the comments. This is Pocket Now Daily, sponsored by MediaTek. Stick around to learn why you should pick MediaTek for your next purchase. The official news today begin with deals, and it's actually going to be a little bit of an interesting blend between Samsung and Apple, particularly coming from Best Buy. This started off with the fact that there are deals from Apple Watches, MacBook Pros, and other products. For example, the Nike Series Apple Watch Series 5 is $100 off, leaving it at $429, and that's with four months of free Apple Music. MacBook Pros are also $200 off, leaving the newest 13-inch variant for $1599. And then moving on to Amazon, the Samsung and Galaxy S20 Plus is currently $200 off, leaving it at $999. And we also have more deals on the OnePlus 6T, I know, 6T, Marshall speakers, and more in the links of the description. And yes, we know that a lot of companies have been hit by the pandemic, one of them being Nokia. I mean, when was the last time that we saw a Nokia product being announced? Or at least the Nokia product that made headlines. I mean, we were expecting, for example, the Nokia 9.3 PureView along with the Nokia 7.3 and 6.3 for Q3 this year. And according to Nokia Power User, Nokia has postponed the event for these phones and it won't happen until Q4. The report also mentions that Nokia is testing prototypes of these three phones and everything seems to be on track but we wonder what on track means. The 9.3 PureView is expected to capture 8K video at 30 frames per second. It will reportedly bring an 120 Hz display. We're still trying to make if it's gonna be Samsung 64 megapixel camera or the 108 megapixel camera, and if they're actually gonna do a good job at it, we'll see. Now, trick question. How many of you remember Intel's Xscale processors? If you don't remember, that's because that's how long ago the company drifted away from mobile processors, assuming that it wasn't a good market. Oh, that was a bad idea. As a result, we kind of did see the company showcase some dual screen and foldable PC prototypes at CES this year. And now they just unveiled some new processors for these products. These new Lakefield processors utilize an in-house hybrid CPU architecture to deliver a mix of performance scalability and raw power for these PCs. They use the 10 nanometer Sunny Cove core technology and leverage the Foveros 3D stacking technology to reduce their size. Intel says that these are the smallest processors to deliver Intel Core performance and full Windows capabilities. They will be first available on Lenovo's ThinkPad X1 Fold and Samsung's Galaxy Book S that's coming, the new variant, I guess. But the thing about it is, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's just 10 nanometers Intel. What year is this? Like, seriously. If you remember, we covered on Friday how Sammy was supposedly going to go all out on their Galaxy Unpacked event for the Note 20. And, uh, well, that's sort of going to happen. I mean, they will still announce this huge list of products. They just won't all happen at Unpacked, apparently. Sam Mobile claims that Samsung will be announcing the Galaxy Watch 3 and the Galaxy Buds live in July. Apparently, these products will be announced before and will be available for purchase on August 5th, which is even when we're expecting the Unpacked event to happen. The Galaxy Watch 3 will reportedly come in 41mm and 45mm variants. It'll get LTE, 5TM water resistance, Gorilla Glass DX, and more for durability. We don't have much information on these buds live except for the fact that they have this bean shape in the leaks. And on a new tweet from Ice Universe, he also stated in a very poetic fashion that the Galaxy Note 20 will be bringing a flat display after all. Now, he didn't mention the Galaxy Note 20 Plus, so I guess that one's gonna be curved, but we'll see. This is getting even more interesting. 
And since we're talking Samsung, let's also discuss the other device that's coming, the Galaxy Fold 2. We actually separated this into another segment because it was just going to be too much. And there's a lot to cover here. ET News just published a new infographic that reveals and sort of confirms some of the details of this Fold 2. It mainly shows the display changes, like the fact that the main display will grow to 7.7 .7 inches diagonal from the 7.3 in the past. And then the outer display will also be of 6.23 inches instead of 4.6. Finally, let's just hope they don't go crazy on the aspect ratio. It also mentions the fact that it will support 120 hertz refresh rate. We don't know if it's going to be on both displays and it'll get rid of the notch to bring in the punch hole. The report also brings up the stylus support, but we covered yesterday how apparently it won't be possible because of the type of glass that's being used. Now, according to them, Samsung will be manufacturing 300,000 of these per month, and they will sell around 3 million per year, according to projections. So yeah, that is the Fold. Um, let's just see if it actually is better. Usually second generation products is where it's at, and I'm really looking forward to it. And guys, before we get to the hottest news today, in addition to today's question, here's a word from today's sponsor, MediaTek. Did you know that its technology powers the popular Sony WF-1000X Mark III's? These were the first true wireless earbuds to feature true active noise cancellation. 24-bit audio signal processing also makes these one of my favorites for sound quality. We have a battery life of up to 24 hours with the carrying case and full integration at a tap with the Google Assistant and even Amazon's Alexa Assistant. You can find them on amazon.com in the first link in the description and also follow the second one to learn why brands like Sony trust MediaTek. Thank you for sponsoring this video. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with Google and Android 11. The company was another one of those that decided to postpone their event given all the protests and I find that to be fantastic. But apparently the event is not going to happen, though don't worry, we still did get the goods. Sort of. Google just released the first public beta of Android 11 to some users with an announcement on the Google Developer blog. Now, the reason why this is not for everyone is because as opposed to last year where certain other OEM partners had an early access to the beta, today this is just for Pixels. Oh, and that's if you own the Pixel 2 and newer. It is kind of a bummer, though Google specifies in the blog post that other devices will be supported in the next coming weeks, though no specifics were provided or which partners. So what's important? Well, think of this update as being mostly about three different categories, people, controls, and privacy. As an example, last week we got some leaks on the new controls that now show up on the power button menu and show you smart devices, your wallet, and the usual power controls. We have a full list of new features in the link to the description, but uh, let us know in the comments down below, what do you think about you know, what Android 11 is bringing and the fact that your device is currently not supported unless it's a Pixel. In my case, I have been using it on my Pixel 4 XL for the past couple of hours. It is very buggy, buyers beware, but uh, think about it is I do still plan on doing a video over the weekend over what my experience is with these new controls because I do like the change in notifications, for example. I do like that change in the power button. I find it to be genius. Uh, but let us know what else would you like to know in the comments down below uh, for that video particularly. So far, I'd say it's it's good. Just too bad it's not supporting everyone. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me run out of jokes at home. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.